Hi, Alyssa here. Welcome to my channel. Today, I am going to share with you 15 things that first time moms wish they knew and that they want to share with you today. I knew that as a first time mom, there were so many things that I thought, why did no one tell me this? So I took to a mom's forum on Facebook and I asked a bunch of women, what is it that you wish that you knew as a first time mom or that you wish that you could tell yourself uh, becoming a first time mom? And there were hundreds of comments. And out of those comments, I took 15 of the most common answers and I'm going to share those with you today. So hopefully, if you are a first time mom, if you are entering the world of motherhood and entering that phase of your life, then you will find some of these things helpful to you. You'll gain a little knowledge from it. And if you are not a first time mom, but you are a seasoned mom, then maybe you will be able to relate. And if there's anything else that I did not hit on this list, which I know there are lots of things that I will not hit on this list because I'm only picking 15, but feel free to put it in the comments. Okay, so the vast majority of these answers are for the postpartum mom who has just delivered a baby physically from her body and is also recovering. So that has to do with hormones and the physical healing. There are also some other answers that could be applicable to surrogate moms, to adoptive moms, and however you became a mother through foster care. Um, some of these answers can be applicable to you, but just keep in mind that most of these are geared towards the mother who has just physically delivered a baby. So um, it has to do with motherhood and the postpartum body. So that's really what we're focusing on in this video. If you want future videos focusing on other uh, you know, types of postpartum life, then we should totally do that. Leave in the comments below how you came into motherhood. Was it adoption, surrogacy, uh, physical birth, and uh, foster care? Are there any other options? I don't really know. However you became a mom, I would love to know that in the comments. But this video is mostly talking about women who have physically given birth. With that being said, let's go. Okay, so one thing that a lot of moms wanted you to know that they didn't realize before having a baby is that once you deliver a baby, there's actually a lot of bleeding that happens. And not only do you bleed whenever you give birth, which there is a lot, a lot of blood giving birth and your partner will see more of that than you will probably. Um, and then in the 48 hours after that, there's a lot of bleeding and then you will continue to bleed for up to six to eight weeks, like like you're having a period for that long. That is something that I did not know. I was not aware of. I, I naively thought you go and you have a baby and then you are fine. <laughs> and you are fine, but you are also bleeding and um, your body is still like ridding of all of the things that were inside of you with the placenta and all this stuff. So it's still shedding that uterine wall, I suppose. So yeah, there's going to be a lot of bleeding. That is something that I didn't know. And apparently a lot of other moms didn't know either. Okay. So secondly, a lot of moms said that there was a lot of crying <laughs> that happened in especially the first two days up to two weeks after the baby was born. And I can totally relate to this. Honestly, with my, with my daughter, with my firstborn, I cried and I cried and I cried, but it was tears of joy and it was uncontrollable, like sobbing. And this is hormones, you know? I mean, they're just crazy. Like you're like, I don't even know why I'm crying, but I'm just so happy and I just love this baby so much that you just cry. And my husband would walk, would walk by the nursery and he'd be like, are you okay? And I'm like, I'm just so happy. <laughs> And so I was doing a whole lot of crying. And then with my son, my second born, I did a lot of crying and it was not as much the tears of joy. I was so joyful to have that baby and I love him with my whole heart, but hormones just kind of hit me in a sadder way after he was born. And I think um, I just had a lot of like, 
you know, feelings of like, um, how am I going to do this? I'm not good enough. And, um, lots of thoughts like that. And, and it just really just hit me in waves and I would just sob. I was crying before I left the hospital with him. Yeah, there are, there may be a lot of tears. The next thing moms want you to know is that it is okay and almost necessary to set boundaries. Set boundaries with your family, set boundaries with your friends. Whenever people are wanting to come and see you either at the hospital or during labor or at your house, Make sure that you just protect yourself and know that that is okay. I mean, if you are in the mood for everyone to come and love on y'all and hold your baby and, you know, whatever, that is so great. But if you're not in the mood for that, you're not ready for all of that attention, you're not ready for all of the outside world to come in and for everyone to hold your baby, you know, or people to hang out with you, if you're not feeling it, it's okay set those boundaries. Family can come between two and six o'clock. Whatever you feel is going to help you, whatever boundaries you can set to help you to not feel so overwhelmed and so drained and that you are able to give yourself and your husband and your baby the time you need, set those unapologetically, unapologetically set those boundaries and do what you need to do. And to go along with that last one is accept help. And if people are wanting to come over and visit you and hold your baby and, you know, whatever, <laughs> get, get all up in your business while you're still bleeding and healing and figuring out this newborn, don't be afraid to put them to work. Say, you know, yeah, you can come over, but I'm going to need you to wash my dishes. <laughs> you can come over, but I'm going to need you to help fold the laundry. <laughs> um, and a lot of people are so ready and eager and willing to say, I'll come over and hold your baby while you clean your house. Do you think I want to be clean in my house while you're holding my baby? No, I want to be holding my baby. You can clean my house. You can come over and clean my bathroom. You want to give me a gift? Hire someone to clean my house, please. Send me dinner. Uber Eats gift cards. Don't be afraid to ask for help and accept it whenever it is offered to you. Okay, so another one is a bit further than that, just the initial crying and the hormones, you know, which is totally normal. Something that is also very normal and not quite as talked about, and it seems to really be a forgotten part of um, newborn postpartum life by people who are older than us, <laughs> is baby blues. It's very common to get just the baby blues. Postpartum depression and postpartum anxiety are very real, and you don't have to suffer alone. I suffered alone with my first child. And then with my second, I made sure I had a, a good solid team of people around me checking in on me and um, really a good just support system around me and uh, some good counselors. So I knew I had people to call whenever I was really feeling down and I had people checking in on me and that made a world of difference. You may need to seek therapy. You may need to get counseling. And if you do, that is okay. Do it. Do what you need to do to take care of yourself so that you can take care of your family. But the next thing that moms want to share with you is that you don't realize how exhausted you're going to be whenever baby is born. Absolutely exhausted. After delivering a baby, your body is just physically depleted. You are so exhausted, your body needs time to heal and recover. And then after that, you don't get a good night's sleep for a really long time. So the exhaustion is real and it does impair, you know, judgment and really harps on your mood and and can just, uh, you know, really affect your memory and a number of things. So there isn't a whole lot you can do to combat this one, I don't think. It's just kind of a part of it. But I wanna encourage you that it's not gonna last forever. Your baby's gonna sleep through the night. Your baby's gonna start waking up less through the night. 
and you will get rest again. If you really need some sleep, have your partner take the baby for a few hours, have somebody come stay with the baby, watch baby sleep, just so you can get a few hours of sleep in. Take some naps, you know? Okay, so something a lot of people are talking about it, that they were not aware of before is breastfeeding. Okay, so we all know that breast milk is ideal for babies. Our babies, our bodies make it for babies. It's really amazing. It has antibodies, all this, you know, good nutrition and stuff. But it isn't so easy for some women as it is for others. I got lucky. I had my baby latched right away. No problems. Um, I was very sore for the first two weeks. I didn't know I was going to be sore. I didn't know that was normal. But it is. <laughs> I was sore for two weeks with my first. I was sore for one week with my second. So I got lucky with the breastfeeding, but many women struggle with the latch. The babies can have you know, tongue ties, lip ties. There, there can be a number of things. Maybe they just don't prefer breastfeeding and they want to bottle feed. And so whether you breastfeed, whether you breastfeed or you bottle feed, you bottle feed breast milk or formula, it's okay. It is all going to be okay. Find what works for you and for your baby and your lifestyle and just make sure that that baby is fed and thriving. Um, another thing that, some, that someone mentioned was the pain and the isolation of breastfeeding. And for myself, it hurt for the couple, first couple of weeks. And I didn't feel isolated as much because I was craving alone time. And whenever people would come and visit me, I would be like, oh, darn, I have to go feed my baby. And it would be like a break for me to get to take my baby away from everyone else and feed the baby. I liked that I was the only one that could do that. And so for me, I think that emotionally breastfeeding was really good for me in a lot of ways. But for some, they don't like that. They don't like that they're the only ones that can do the breastfeeding. And for some people, the pain goes on beyond two weeks, especially if there are issues with a latch and different things that um, that happen, mastitis, you know, there's a, just a number of things that could happen. And so some have ongoing pain with it. And for some, it is very isolating. They're the only ones that can feed the baby. And oftentimes they can be uncomfortable in settings, feeding like breastfeeding out in public or, um, or around certain people or whatever and want to retreat and feed the baby elsewhere. For me, I don't mind feeding baby in a restaurant or whatever, but I do have to isolate myself with my son whenever we breastfeed because he's so easily distracted that if I'm gonna get a full feeding in him, he's gonna to need to be focused on eating and nothing else. So um, that's isolating in a different way, but it is something to take into consideration and to remember and know you're not alone, that other people are going through this and if what's if what you're doing is not working for you, it is okay to make a change. Okay, a lot of women didn't realize that after giving birth, they were really gonna need to take it easy for a while. You have those select few who are like, you know, pop the baby out and then they get jump up and they're like, I'm fine, this is great, I don't need any stitches, like let's go go for a run. <laughs> But for the majority of us, there are days of recovery. I found personally that on the third day after having baby, it was the worst. I was so weak. I could barely walk. My legs were shaking and uh, my body was just really, the shock of it all was just really starting to wear off. And um, I was really feeling a lot of weakness. So yes you will probably need to take it easy for a while. In fact, with my with my first, I didn't realize that um, it took so long to recover. And I'm not sure that if it took longer with my second or if I was just more aware of my weakness with my second because I was also trying to keep up with a three-year-old. Thankfully, my grandma showed up at my house and took care of me for a week because I don't know what I would have done without her help. <laughs> I'm not good at asking for help and she just came and gave me help and it was amazing. I love you, Grandma.
Thank you so much. <laughs> so after having my second, I realized like just talking, it took a lot of energy and my muscles felt so weak. I had to take a break from even talking, also walking, <laughs> you know, and whenever you're trying to keep up with a three-year-old, it's just, it's really difficult. So if I ever have another child, I will absolutely take two weeks of bed rest and plan for that. So I would recommend take, make sure you have two weeks of bed rest with your baby. I don't think that's something that you could regret. You're going to get to the chores. You're going to do all of the things. Just take two weeks. Bond with your baby. Heal. Recover. Okay, this one I didn't know coming into motherhood either is that um, along with a recovery process, you are not supposed to have sex for six weeks. And that's like that's pretty much minimum. And then at your six week postpartum appointment, you will be cleared by your OB or your midwife. And with my first, I, I'm pretty sure I waited eight weeks and it was interesting getting back into the swing of things after that. It's not everything is in the same place that it used to be. Like your organs have shifted and everything down there has shifted on the inside. And so I've heard some people say that it's like the first time again. And uh, I don't know, the first time wasn't bad for me. So um, I don't really relate to that. But the first time after a baby, that was pretty, pretty much a doozy. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, um, don't be surprised by that. Wait at least six weeks and then just take your time, okay? Slow and steady. <laughs> oh yes, here's another one. Moms want you to know to take the stool softener after giving birth and eat fiber-rich foods. <laughs> You'll hear a lot of moms say that they were terrified of the first poop postpartum. <laughs> and I'll say it's not that scary as long as you have taken your stool softener and you've eaten the fiber-rich foods. I did those two things and everything ran smoothly, but I can't imagine how it would be horrifying had I not taken the stool softener and the fiber rich foods. So make sure you do that. Some women say that they get stretch marks after the baby is born. I don't know if it is because like, I, I don't know why that is. I don't know if your skin is like, oh, it's stretched. Let's remember that. I, I have no idea why that is. But I, a friend of mine said that she got stretch marks after baby was born. And many people in this online forum said the same thing. I didn't receive, I didn't get stretch marks after the baby was born. I did while I was pregnant, but um, some people do. So <laughs> don't get too haughty. <laughs> If you are humongous and you have no stretch marks, because they might come. Okay, so here's an important one. I love a good schedule. I love a baby on schedule. My babies sleep through the night, usually, because of a good schedule. But in the newborn phase, don't stress that schedule too much. I'll go on to say, throughout their lives, don't stress the schedule too much. I think it's great to have a schedule. I think a schedule goal is awesome. And some days you'll meet it and some days you won't, but don't stress it. And I mean, you know, you're dealing with people here. They're not robots, they're not computers. You can't just program them to do what you want them to do. They're humans, they're gonna have good days and bad days and off days and weird days and crazy days, and that's okay. Especially during the newborn phase, don't stress that schedule too much. If your baby's thriving, your baby's gaining the weight that it needs, just don't worry. Give your baby what your baby needs. Give yourself what you need. Take your time. Personally, I don't start any sort of a schedule until after baby meets their birth weight. My daughter, it took two weeks for her to meet her birth weight after she was born and we had left the hospital. For my son, it only took one week. And then I start like an eat, wake, sleep schedule. Um, it's like the baby wise schedule. And then they just automatically sleep through the night. And that's worked for two so far. Usually, usually 
not all the time, but usually if they're on that schedule, then they sleep through the night. And like my goal is everybody, everybody's sleeping through the night. Mama needs some rest. Um, but, and that's just my personal thing. Some people never ever do a schedule. Some people do different kinds of schedules. That's okay. Just whatever schedule you were thinking of, don't stress it too much, especially in the newborn phase. Give yourself a break. It's all gonna be okay, mama. It's all gonna be okay. Moms want you to know that after baby's born, you can have bladder issues. Personally, I haven't ever had any issues with this, but I know of some moms who never felt like they needed to use the bathroom, like they never needed to pee. And then they ended up with like kidney infections and stuff, UTIs and kidney infections because they just weren't going to the bathroom because they lost that sensation of needing to pee. And then on the other end, I've known of women who were peeing themselves because they didn't know they needed to go until the last minute or they like just needed to go all of the time and weren't making it to the bathroom quickly enough. I've heard like, you know, both things happen and then other like some more mild issues with bladder issues, but that is like a real thing and that can happen. Don't be alarmed if it does, just make sure that you talk to your doctor and uh, make sure that you are taken care of there are medications that can help with this. I don't know, possibly procedures. I don't really know what can be done for it, but I know that there is help and that that is a somewhat normal issue is having bladder issues after having your baby. Oh, this is the last thing. Something I didn't know and a lot of moms didn't know was that you have contractions after the baby's born. Usually whenever you're breastfeeding, you will have contractions. This isn't as painful with your firstborn. You might not even feel it. I hear it gets worse with every child after that. And I definitely was feeling it more so with my second. Whenever I would breastfeed, I would feel those contractions and I was taking ibuprofen because of it. And it hurts and I mean, you're just sweating through it. But yeah, isn't that crazy that you, you have contractions and it's because your uterus is going back into place. You know, you're, it's shrinking back down to its original size. And my doctor <laughs> would tell me, remember whenever you're having those breastfeeding contractions, you are dropping a dress size. <laughs> and so whenever you are having those breastfeeding contractions and your uterus is shrinking down and you're like, oh, I already you know, gave birth, why is this happening? Remember, you're dropping a dress size, your body is shrinking, so remember that. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Sally. <laughs> okay, so that's 15 of the things that first time moms wish they knew and they wanted you to know. So if you are grateful for these for this list of things and you learned something, make sure you give a big thank you to all the moms who helped you out today. Thank them in the comments. I'm gonna be linking this video onto the page where I asked the questions so they will see this video and see the answers that they posted. So make sure you give them a big thank you. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this content and you wanna see some more similar content, then make sure you give this video a thumbs up. If you have any more questions, make sure you leave that in the comments below. I can maybe either reply to you, put it in a forum to see what other moms are saying and possibly make a future video out of it. We'll see, I don't know. Thank you so much for being here today. Remember as always to live honestly and I will see you soon, bye.